Down in southwest United States of America, we have different kinds of lizards, and a couple of those are very interesting. One of them, called the gecko lizard, has some very special characteristics. Its feet. Now, if you have a little pet gecko lizard, and they're friendly little things, you can watch that. It'll run right across your ceiling. You could have a ceiling made of glass, and it'll just run right across the ceiling. It doesn't fall off. Gravity does not pull it off. And, and so the scientists, for many years, they just didn't know what makes that lizard be able to stick like it does. So they took its feet, which are a special kind of feet, and, and they magnified the feet. And they discovered on these feet, there are like little hairs, little tufts of hairs. And so they thought, well, that's not enough. And that was with 2,000 magnifications. And they said, well, that's not enough. Uh, there's something else here. So they put it under phase electron microscope, these little hairs, and they kept magnifying them and magnifying them. They got up to 35,000 magnifications, and all of a sudden, there was the answer. All over these little hairs are tiny little suction cups, but you have to magnify them 35,000 times just to see the, the suction cup. Now, these suction cups are so powerful that if the foot was not made in a special way, when that gecko, let's say, put his foot up against the ceiling, it would just suck it right up against there, and he's stuck. He's not moving. So his foot had to be made in such a way that he can use other parts of his foot to pop loose those suction cups. So what he'll do is, and if you look at the foot of a gecko, it, it looks different than a, a normal lizard. Most lizards have kind of finger-like with big nails on them. And the gecko, though, has like these little rounded uh, pads on its foot. And it can take those feet, and they're almost kind of rounded on the bottom, so that it can, for instance, use the suction cups in the front to pop up the ones in the back. Or it can use them on the side to pop up the other side. And so it just does it naturally, but that's what's going on. How would a lizard evolve little 35,000 times it takes to see the magnifications, how would it evolve that? And why would it evolve that? And why would it have the right kind of a foot that has to be there if it's going to have those suction cups? All of that had to be there all at once. And then we have this other lizard. He's called the Chuckawalla lizard. And he has really three different distinctives that make him special. One of them is uh, he has almost like a blanket across his back of skin. And this skin changes color. He'll start out in the morning and it'll be dark. And that means it absorbs more sunlight because he's a cold-blooded animal and he needs to be able to get his blood warmed up so he can run away from his enemies and things. And so it'll warm him up. But later on in the afternoon, in the desert, when the sun is really hot, it turns a light beige color and it reflects the sun so that his blood doesn't boil. Now he has a defense mechanism. Let's say a coyote wants to eat one of these little lizards, and they do try to eat these lizards. Uh, he will run into it like a crack in the rocks, and he expands his body kind of like a blowfish. He will blow his body up, and he's now stuck in there, and they can't get him out. There's no way to pull it out of there. It just kind of conforms to the cracks in there, his defense mechanism. But the thing I like about the chuckwalla lizard is his desalination factory. Now that means he has too much salt in his blood. Why? Well, because he lives in the desert and there's no water, so he doesn't have anything to drink. So as he eats plants and little animals, little insects, he begins to build up salt. And as the salt builds up, it's enough to kill him. Now, when does he know he has too much salt? Well, when he gets too much salt, what does that do? It kills him. So survival of the fittest, you see, he's out of here, but he's not, why? Because God made a little factory in his nose. It's a little desalination factory. It's a little factory that will, as the blood builds up salt, all of a sudden he thinks, I think I need to get the salt out of my blood. I think I'll run it through my factory. So he shunts the blood. He detours the blood through this little factory. And that little factory takes the salt out of his blood. Now every now and then, the chuckwalla lizard, he goes, achoo, and he sneezes pure salt crystals. Now, I think you could take a chuckwalla lizard, put him on your dining room table, and say, okay, Chuck, we need a little salt here. And there you go. We've got pure salt from a lizard's sneezes. I think that's incredible. He is another one of the incredible creatures that our Lord has made.